Hello, this is David Wormsey back for a third video looking at using custom CSS and Beaver Builder. Here we are just looking at my Beaver Builder unofficial live demo, which you can try out if you want to go and try out things on Beaver Builder. The link is below, but you're not going to need it for this video. And just before we move on, let's go and look at where we are in this series. So the first video, I looked at where we could place custom CSS within the Beaver Builder theme and the plugin and the pros and cons of each of those and I looked at the cascade and how that worked in Beaver Builder in which order the files loaded in the cascade and then I moved on to looking at various CSS editors that are popular in the Beaver Builder community before adding an extra one on Stylizer which is my favorite CSS editor and the one I'm going to use in these videos so today on the proper number three we are looking at CSS basics particularly concentrating on the plugin and we're really just talking abstract here we are looking at the structure of the CSS so I've already opened up this page on another tab in page builder so I can just cover some of the real basics here that I'm sure you probably know already so the page builder operates in the content editor areas of WordPress typically in between the header and footer area and each page is made up of rows we need to select a row in before we can do anything and then they have columns which we can select how many we have of those and within those columns we have modules and that's what we need to understand to understand how our selectors are working as well so for each of these areas we have a selector to go with it so we have fl dash row for rows and these are all classes that are used on this not ids we have one for column groups so we can style all of the columns in one go with fl dash col dash group and we've got one for col and one for modules uh, i hope that makes sense and above all of these we have an extra one which is the daddy to all of these children which is the one that sits above all pages and everything's contained within it which is fl dash builder dash content now a little thing about this one i learned this from colin cartwright Ooh, must be a year ago on dynamic beaver if you're struggling and this tends to go with themes that are not beaver builder themes because they can be placed in their css or their style sheet somewhere else in the cascade if you feel like you need to use an important tag and don't want to try sticking this in before your selectors that often sorts it out and you don't need to it makes it more specific there and also if you're wondering and you're new to beaver builder what the fl stands for it's because it's made by fast line media who are the people behind beaver builder and in fact in the very early days it was called fast line builder before we got into the lovely beaver builder name okay and one other thing while i'm here this was something that came in this week and thanks to dave porter for reminding me even of this because i even requested this we can have 12 columns in any row so this can be misunderstood because when you use the beaver builder editor itself it just shows six columns but of course we got that facility when we are hovering over the edit columns here normally but I've used up all 12, we would get an option to be able to insert a new column before or after the one that we've selected. Now, when you get to 12, it takes that option away from you. That's why you can't see it. So anyway, that's a useful thing to know. Perhaps things are going to change soon with that. I haven't checked this out. At the moment I'm doing this video, we have 1.9 the new version of Beaver Builder is in alpha and it's got columns within columns or rows within rows, whatever you call them. So that might increase the options, but I can't imagine anyone needing any more than 12. There's hardly any space here now. Okay, so let me just move on with some more and I shall go over to my editor now. So I've got the same page open here so I can just show you quickly the basics here. I've just styled up here and hidden them. I've just I'm not hidden them I've commented them out so they're not showing so if we put this color that I've put on on the build up content area and just uncomment that we can see that coming through and you can't see it everywhere because obviously there's more specific styles and background images on the back here but you can see it coming through here so this is covering the whole of the page and you can see that let's turn on now a row which I've added another color to and it'll color 
all of those rows unless they've got something more specific covering them over but we can see this better if i put a little bit of margin on it there we are we can see then it's showing the builder content underneath the green in between those rows so we can mark those out let's go to our column groups turn that one we've got another color and let's see where we might there these might separate out if i go and add a bit of margin here so there we are that we can see that there two column groups finally we'll just go and open up the module there and my lovely pink here and let's put a bit of margin here and as you can see that's just separating out these module areas over here which have been styled so that's it i mean obviously if we were selecting like this we would be applying this if i save this now uh, to the actual site these would get applied to every page that had page builder on it and that wouldn't be a good thing so obviously when we're using css we uh, generally not just selecting this we'll be adding another selector to it to make it more specific generally i'm not often using these at all, at all. i just kind of use them as markers when i'm looking at css so let me just show you that now and before i do that i'm just gonna get rid of what i've just done to clean things up a little bit so let's take a look at these beavers i put over here these four photo modules here so i'm just going to use stylizer to select one of these and yeah okay so i'm going to oops let's go over here and on stylizer what i can do is i can make rules over here and this gives me all of the selectors going through the whole of the cascade going to the closest one there to right to the back where we get into the html and body at the back here so you know what i do with these things is i use them as little markers along the way so i can kind of see where i am in the scheme of things um so we can uh, let's say we're moving back here uh, where, where's the first one huh there's our module one that's selecting all of them there. Uh, there's our column group. And as we move back, well, where's our column? There's our column as well. And we'll go back to, so these are kind of markers on the way here. But what I really want to draw your attention to, and this is quite specific to Beaver Builder, quite unique to it, is that for each of these rows, columns and modules when you drag them in beaver builder automatically creates you a new class selector to go with each of these and you can see these just after these areas so if we look down here we have somewhere oh it's over here so the one that goes with this one is this this is the individual and unique row selector for this one it oh, sorry no, where's our row? Ah, I missed our row. That's it. That's why it didn't make any sense. There's our row. Stay with me, folks. <laughs> this is our row. And this is the selector that goes with this one. And it's been generated just for that one particular row. And the same thing has happened again when we come to our column group. We end up with this one. And that's been just selected for that particular column group. And again, when we single out a particular column, we've got... There we are. You can see, maybe you can see that little red dots around that one. It's selecting out that particular column and it's got its own unique ID. Nowhere else in your site will you have the same one. And we get the same again for the actual module itself. So these are all created every time you do something, but there are a few exceptions to that. And I would suggest that you don't generally use this. Let me just go back actually to our page and just show you what I think are the problems with this so the first problem is and i've actually stuck this css where i don't normally so we have to assume that i'm exporting a page for this one so there we are these are the styles that i've applied to each of these over here and they've all got their unique ids here as you can see now the first problem is with doing this and using these is that if I came along to this later with no comments on here, and even that wouldn't be helpful, I have no idea what these are referring to. Are they referring to a column, a row, or module, and what's their use? I don't know what the style means anymore. So generally, I don't think that's a great idea. And there's another reason, perhaps, to make your own custom selectors and place those in the modules, columns, and rows under the advanced tab. I think that's generally a better thing to do and this is why let me get rid of this actually i'm going to cancel that 
On this, I did a little experiment here. So the first one I created it had its own you know, ID, and then I duplicated it to see if it would create a different one. And as you already know the answer, because you've just seen it, it did. So then I decided to see what would happen with our global. So I saved it as a global module. I thought, oh, maybe that will come back with the same, but it didn't. So here's the problem. If you save your modules and style them using those automatic mode IDs, those class selectors, it's not going to carry through onto the next page or wherever else you select those through. So there's another reason for actually adding your own. And just for those who are a bit nerdy like me and like to know how things are working, I did the same here with rows. And there was a slight change to this one here. So I did a load of rows and they created their own IDs. And within those IDs, the columns and the modules themselves all also got unique IDs. And then I did the same again with a global saved row and it worked the same in terms of the row got a different ID a different class selector but here's a surprise the actual columns and the modules within that saved row got the same one so the one in this blue one over here is the same as that one in this blue one the only thing that's different about this section and this section is that the actual row itself has got its own name hope that's making sense stay with me folks please uh okay so i'm just going to just show you a quick thing and put this into action just to prove that that's right and also raise another little point as well which is just a general css point so um i'm just going to show you so you can see that they are i've opened up this global row and if i go into the column settings here and pop into column settings go over to advanced you can see Oh, that's the blue box uh, one I've put in. Actually, I'm actually looking at the, in my next example, I'm actually looking at the text editor itself. And I've put in a class of write box and write box over here for a class of ID and, uh, sorry, an ID selector and a class selector here. So I just want to make a point about ID selectors with this. So I just want to show you that I've actually done that. And we'll go back over here and go back to my example. We know the bottom two here are global rows here. So I can prove there that this one is the same as that one because I've already added it here. So when we've selected this area here, let's just go and find it. We can see I've got the same idea here. You can see that it's the same as this one here. So I've already styled this one up. So I'm using this auto generated one. So I'm just going to show that one through. And there we are, it's come through and just to prove that it came through on the one above, it did and it didn't affect the other ones because that is the unique thing about those global save rows and it's keeping the same IDs for those columns and modules there. So just the thing on IDs, I generally would avoid them and it's a good thing, it's something I was a bit slow to pick up on really in my CSS journey, but IDs have infinitely more power than classes so when you're trying to keep an order in the cascade to understand your rules when you start to mix in ids which always should be only one unique id per page but when you've got them in uh, if you use them just willy-nilly you're going to get very confused where they rest and i can just show you that here so we would expect that to show as it is we would expect if i go and use this one which is the class right box which is over here and closest to the element if I uncomment that out, of course, that usurps this one because it's closer to the bottom of my cascade because this is the bottom style sheet. This is the very bottom rule and it beats that. But here's the thing about IDs. It should be not showing when I turn this one on. If it was a class, it definitely wouldn't. And if you look at it, uh, let's just find it over here. There we are. It's moved back some way from the element itself as well like the class but if I go and and comment that you see that one takes over and steals the show so yeah the only time I think I generally use these is when I'm using one of those scripts say where we want the arrow to click us to a row on the page scripts I think that's about the only time I ever use an ID 
So that's it. I think I've probably covered all the things I wanted to do in this video. I don't know if that's just confused you even more or really helped you to understand stuff. Definitely for some future videos, I'm going to get onto some practical stuff. But I thought if I just covered some of these basics or at least my understanding of the CSS, it might be quite helpful for future videos. All right. Thank you. You've been very patient for listening to me. I hope there's some use. Talk to you on the next video. Bye bye.